Bishop, thank you so much for being here. Well, it's been an eventful summer mm -hmm. so far <laughs> in terms of the news that we've been covering here on Current. So I, I really want to get your insight on some of the top stories we've been following. Yeah. I have to start with Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. and, and the absolutely disgusting videos that have come out revealing, you know, the sale of baby body parts for, for money. Is this a sign, Bishop, that our moral compass has gone completely awry? Well, clearly on the abortion issue, people have a blind uh, spot in their, in their minds. It's misplaced uh, uh, humanism in a sense to say, well, the woman's body is hers and anything that happens there is her doing, but we have life that, that, is, that is growing in a, in a woman and she has responsibilities to that life. It's not up to her to do whatever she wishes with it. Certainly, you know, we could start to say when there's a heartbeat, go down the list. I mean, you know, nobody, the, the whole philosophical question is when does life begin? Well, life is life at any stage of its development. Mm -hmm. But uh, clearly we see that life is now being almost encouraged to the point of being able to provide body parts. And then even the abortions are done in a certain way so that the, they can harvest these body parts. So. It surely shows a, a lack of, of respect for human life, even at that stage of development, where clearly the infant is viable, could yes. be viable. Uh, so that, that's a terrible thing. Uh, just take an analogy, uh, you know, when you say that people now want to stop funding for Planned Parenthood, everybody says, terrible, you know, they have so many women's health issues they help with. Well, this, which may be true, but let's make the analogy with Catholic education. Uh, I, I, how about, why can't I get government money and then just teach religion with my own money? Right. And they're saying, well, we're doing abortions with our own money or charging people for them is what really mm -hmm. they're doing. And that the rest of the money is uh, being used for other things. Well, money's fungible. One organization can do what they want once they have the money that they ordered it, of course. But uh, so, I mean, they're, 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 what they're saying truly doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it, I'd like to have that same opportunity to fund uh, the teaching of uh, math and science uh, with government money and then use my own money to teach religion. That, they wouldn't allow that. Separation of church and state. Well, here you're, you're in a very similar situation where one organization wants to say uh, that the money they're getting is clearly only used for this. Uh, that's, it's not segregated that much or that well to be able to say that. So I think that that has to be understood. It's definitely a difficult situation, Bishop. I appreciate that you're very vocal on this and, and you do mm -hmm. your best to educate us about it, which I think is important for people to do, to educate themselves about the many layers of this. Another important theme that we talked about throughout the summer, Pope Francis's ongoing catechesis about family, especially the, the social and spiritual challenges our families are facing now. We just talked about one challenge and now our families are also in a state of despair. What are your thoughts? Well, the Pope is very co concrete in giving advice to families and uh, talking about sp specific uh, situations, uh, about uh, you know, making it very clear, very simple, uh, the rules about marriage, to be able to forgive one another, to uh, uh, give, I say, very concrete examples that anybody can understand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a wonderful catechesis he's giving. And I think the World Meeting of Families will be an opportunity for families from all over the world to come together, look at the issues that are affecting families around the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a great um, opportunity that he'll be here again for all the people celebrating Mass for them in Philadelphia all to support family life. Okay. The, the bedrock of uh, society is family life. So we can't let it uh, be diminished, that families are broken, uh, that families are not capable of supporting life. And that's and so important. The, the reason I love talking with you, Bishop, now and, and especially when we're, when we're together at, at conferences, meetings, dinners, is because you always are on top of current events. You mm. always have a finger on the pulse of current events. Are there any particular stories that have struck you this summer that, that you feel we need to talk about that we haven't given enough attention to? Well, the whole situation in Syria is deteriorating and the capture of Christians, holding them hostage, uh, and the world sits by and nothing is done, uh, trying to uh, it's a misplaced policy from not only the United States, but the whole 
uh, civilized world is standing by as we see a raging, I can't even say it's civil war, it's from out, people from outside coming in. If there was people fighting among themselves, well, it's a little different. Sure. Not that it's that different, but it's not like people coming from other places being drawn there to wage war on uh, Christians and even Muslims who don't agree with their principles. So uh, I think that's, that's the story that has not been told enough this summer. Okay. It's a worsening situation, and uh, someday we will maybe recognize the, the depth of what happened. All right. Thank you, Bishop, very much. Uh, it's a difficult world we live in, but I appreciate your leadership okay. and your guidance. Thank, thank you. you for being with us. Okay.